just want to specify, I'm not a prophet. I'm like everybody Christian. I watch because Jesus told us to watch. And I don't like people who say, oh, you cannot, you know, you can't know when Jesus, you know, will come back. You cannot know the date. But we can know the seasons and the time. Just looking at Jerusalem that is surrounded by you know, armies. Um, Jesus says, lift up your head. And also, uh, the it's not rumors of war now. It's war. War is there. We can see that we are in, in the time before the flood, just looking at how society is all turned upside down. We know, we know that rapture is at the door for those who are watching. And uh, recently we know Trump, President Trump was elected. And uh, we know how it was, you know, almost hysteria. I won't go further with that because it's still explosive. But... If Jesus told us to watch and he told us you cannot, you know, know the day or the hour, but how come he says to us to watch? So I believe we are doing the will of God by watching. And watching is not bad. We are we are expecting a deliverance from the this evil wor wor world. We are expecting a deliverance because as Christian, firm Christian, we are suffering living in that corrupt world. We have eyes to see. Most people are blind. They don't see. They don't see the evil, all the evil that is, uh, all the lies and the evil in this world. People are hypnotized. They are asleep. Even Christians are. And that's bad. That's really bad. We are the time, we are in the time of loud say church and people, uh, not people, but Jesus tell us that because you're neither cold or warm, I will vomit you from my mouth. We have to be very, very hot, very warm, not warm, but hot for Jesus Christ. We have to return to our first love. If you feel attacked by demons, it's a good sign because demon hates Christians that are hot and rejoice if you're persecuted now because Satan is getting more and more crazy and more aggressive against those firm, hot Christians. Satan won't attack someone who eats in his hand, who is not firm, who has false doctrine. He will let that people, you know, without any trouble, he will let that person comfortable in this world. I'm sorry to be long. I'm sorry to take a long time to introduce that video. Uh, just be patient. Uh, the best is yet to come. I work a lot uh, to find uh, details to be uh, as much deep as I can in my research, not to uh, rely on emotion, but really rely on uh, uh, scripture observation and um, try to be as much uh, uh, discipline not to uh, just uh, make people feel good so I'm sorry just be patient please I'm obeying God by doing that sometime I'm very very tired of doing that but I want to do those video to exhort my sister, my brother, my sister and brother in Christ that are that are hoping for a deliverance, 
that are still hoping for a close deliverance because we are suffering, for sure we are suffering. So, I will give you my observation. Those are only observation. And maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right, but I don't care. I just want to do and obey God and partake and, and all the people who are watching. So we can see in this version of Corinthian, uh, King James Version, it says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. Remember, it's not the seven trumpet in Apocalypse. It's the trumpet of God, not a trumpet of an angel. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Maybe God wants to give us a clue with that uh, version uh, in the King James. Uh, of one current chain, but maybe not. But I just find that a little strange and funny that we are uh, uh, reading a last Trump. And maybe Trump is the last uh, president of uh, the United States. We are now in the month, Hebrew month of Sheshvan, which is the second civil month and the eighth uh, ecclesiastical month. And uh, Sheshvan is uh, the month of the tribe of Manasseh. I will talk uh, about Manasseh later in that video. So uh, this month is an important month. There are no Hebrew feasts, but uh, we have to know that Sheshvan, uh, second month, uh, on the 17th of Sheshvan, we have a very important uh, date that uh, we can find in uh, Genesis. The month of Sheshvan, on the 17th, there was the flood. And that's why the 17th of Sheshvan we have to know that uh, uh, it's uh, the date uh, of the flood. So, it is uh, written, and it came to pass after seven days that Noah and his family were waiting in the ark, that the waters of the flood were on the earth. In the 600 year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seven, uh, the second civil month, Sheshvan, the seventieth day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep were broken up, and the windows of heaven were open. Then the flood came upon the earth for forty days. That's when the water of above and below uh, were open. Not all the time uh, the ark uh, was floating, but when there was water. And the water increased and lifted up the ark so that it rose above the earth. I uh, wanted to know um, the duration of the flood. And I had um, I had uh, uh, found uh, the separate period with the days, just to uh, know exactly how long was the flood, and they arrive at a number of three hundred and seventy. When I look at three hundred and seventy. It uh, reminds me of uh, three multiplied by seven or seven, seven, seven. So Noah entered the ark on month two, Sheshvan, day 17 of that year, and exited the ark on month two, day 
27 of the next year. That's a total of one year and 10 days from Genesis 7, 11 to 8, 18, assuming a lunar calendar of about 360 days. Noah would have been on the ark for approximately 370 days. Okay, so this year, Sunday, November 17 of that year, in the morning it would be Sheshvan 16, but in our afternoon and evening it would be Sheshvan 17. That's because there is Israel time is seven hours ahead of us. So when it's midnight, it's 7 a.m. in Israel. And in Israel, the day end when there is a sunset. Uh, we're accustomed for our days to be at midnight. Because of that, on the 17th of November, in the morning of our 17th of November, at 9 a.m. 43, they will in Israel they will they will switch from the 16 to the 17 of Sheshvan. So most of our Sunday 17 of November will be for Israel the 17 of Sheshvan, which is the date of the flood. So we can find uh, the reference is Genesis chapter 1, verse 14 to 16, just to clarify. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. I put that verse to uh, show that I'm not uh, going to do astrology. I'm going to use the star to see the sign of the seasons. Venus will be in the Milky Way, in the tip of the teapot, in Sagittarius, and Venus is the Aleph Tav star. Why Venus is called the morning star or the evening star? Why is Venus either visible at sunset or sunrise? It has to do with the planet's orbit relative to both the sun and the earth. Jesus Christ is referred to to at Revelation 22.16 as the bright morning star. Additionally, the planet Venus is giving the name evening star when it appears in the west after sunset and morning star when it appears in the east before sunrise. So we can read in Luke 1.31.33, but Jesus is also the bright morning star in Malachi 4.2 promises Israel that the sun of righteousness will arise with healing in its wings. Revelation 22.16 identified Jesus as the bright morning star. Just as the morning star appears before the sunrise, so Jesus will come for the church before he returns to restore Israel to himself. Those images of the star are all from Stellarium on the 17th of uh, November, 17th of Sheshvan. And uh, the sky is really uh, exploding in signs. This one is Venus in the Milky Way on the top of uh, the teapot. And... Um, Sagittarius uh, is like a half uh, horse and half man with a bow, and like it's an archer, and uh, the bow is pointing to uh, 
uh, Scorpio and Antares, which are uh, not a good uh, constellation. You can see a drawing of Sagittarius, and you have to notice that just beside uh, Sagittarius, there, there is a Corona uh, Australis. Uh, this is just uh, interesting. We have a black hole when you see an infrared light just in front of the arrow of the archer uh, of Sagittarius. It's just a nice uh, observation I have found. This is to describe that in front of Sagittarius we have Scorpio, which is a evil constellation with Antares as a evil star. Antares, a star in Scorpio, is the watcher of the West. Antares has a long history of magical and mundane astrological significance within the mythology of ancient culture of the world. They made also a talisman with Antares. So we can see a talisman, maybe it's in silver, and in uh, that represent a scorpion, a scorpio. And in the middle, you have a amethyst for the Antares star. So I told you about... Um, uh, it's 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 supposed to be Corona Borealis, just uh, beside um, Sagittarius constellation, which we can see Venus uh, in Sagittarius. Uh, Corona Borealis, meaning the northern crown. The Hebrew name is Atara, a royal crown, and the Arabic name is Al Ikil an ornament or jewel. The brightest star has the name al Fika, the shining. A royal crown can only be destined, destined for a king, Jesus. There will be a once-in-a-lifetime nova explosion in Corona Borealis, and it's running late. The famous exploding star T. Coronae Borealis is due to detonate any day now, but it's running a little late. So, only by watching um, Venus, Sagittarius, Milky Way, Corona Borealis, Scorpio, we have already... Uh, many signs. Uh, remember, Sagittarius arrow is a victorious arrow. Um, from Sagittarius, which can represent Jesus, and um, Venus for sure, morning and evening star. And you have uh, the evil defeated. Uh, Mercury, I cannot tell you uh, much more about that. Uh, why is it there? I know Mercury is a faithful witness and a, a wedding of Christ to his church. But even uh, looking at this first consolation, we have lots, we have lots of uh, hint. Above all the first consolation that we have seen with the uh, kind of plenty of uh, information. Um, the, the Nova explosion in Corona Borealis is running late, and the last one was 80 years ago, and 80 years ago is a generation in the Bible. If we look at Mars, Mars is in the Cancer constellation. And cancer is supposed to be our heavenly security. What mass has to do in our heavenly security? That's a little strange. And Mars is the planet, a red planet, 
is considered to be uh, the planet of war. And it's red because it's full of iron. And uh, we can read here why Max called the bringer of war. It is named after the Roman god of war. Mars is a terrestrial planet that is uh, like Earth. It has a solid surface. I tried to find on the internet something that relate to um, Mars in Cancer and a relation to World uh, World, uh, world War Tree. So maybe it's not the perfect one, but that's one. So now Luke, uh, we're going to see in Luke 10, 18, and it's written. And he said to them, I beheld Satan having fallen as lightning, lightning out of heaven. So we're going to see about Saturn. That is for a long time in the fall of the water that comes from the picture of Aquarius. And if uh, Saturn is Satan planet, uh, the fall of the water will inevitably make Saturn fall. Now we have Hebrew 2.14. For as much... Then, as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him, we call uh, him, it's the devil, that had the power of death, that is the devil. Remember, Satan has the power of death. That's why on this image we have the Green Reaper. And also on that image we still have the, the Green Reaper Satan, Saturn and God, the nature of reality. Saturn has on his top um, something that resembles a cube. Uh, it's a hexagon, but with a hexagon, you can make the image of a cube. Saturn is related uh, as links to esoterical um, stories. You can see here the Lord of the Ring. There's a ring around Saturn. You can see... On the top, uh, not much clearly, but uh, you have a kind of a cube you, here in the, the logo uh, of a company. You have lots of Saturn reference. One thing for sure, seeing Saturn in the fall of the water of Aquarius, it automatically make us think of the fall of Saturn. Like I I was uh, reading in the, the reference. Now, the most important watch is this one. The moon is the church. The moon reflects the light of Jesus. Jesus is the sun. God is the sun, and again, the moon will be on the star Elnat. The Elnat star, which is linked to Origa, is also the right tip of the horn of Taurus, which is representing those who have given their life to Christ, those who are born again. The left horn is about the Gentile who are not saved. And this position on the 17th of the moon, also the moon will be in the Milky Way, which is the highway to heaven, like Venus was in the Milky Way. 
So, there's a lot of sign in the stars, very much. I took a um, screenshot just to show you how Origo is uh, made. Origo is uh, representing um, a shepherd with goat in his lap. The constellation of Origo sits above the ecliptic path of the sun. This area of the sky is symbolic of the land or the dwelling of the righteous. The brightest star is uh, Aliot, she goat, which is also known as Capello. Another bright star, Menekion. Chain of the goats. This name would describe a flock of goats feathered to their master. Under the right foot of the goat herd is the star El Nat, very important, wounded from the right horn, which represents the right horn, the resurrected saints of Taurus. Wow. Altogether, there are five very bright stars in Origo, roughly in the shape of a circle or goat uh, pen. Other stars include, uh, whatever, flock of goats, kid goats, wounded, and I'll try to find a more explicit uh, picture of uh, Origo with the uh, goat herd. This picture is uh, well describing the goat herd with uh, the goat and the baby goat. And the other one will uh, situate you more about uh, how the stars and uh, are, how they are positioned compared to the image uh, of the goat herd and the goat and the baby goat. So just looking back at uh, the constellation Origo, uh, Taurus, uh, the moon which represent uh, the church, and uh, also, uh, I could have mentioned Jupiter in between the horns, but the main thing to focus is the moon on the right horn of Jupiter, those who have accepted Christ. The star is called Beta Tauri, or El Nat, and also this star is called Resurrection Saints. And also the Milky Way, which is the highway, to heaven, like Venus was in the Milky Way. And uh, those are the main thing to remember. Lots of sign, lots of sign. You have an overall view uh, of the moon, Taurus, Origo, Jupiter, even Orion. And we can see the Milky Way on the left. Uh, like a cloud. Oh, this is hard to, to read, but it's just to mention that the Milky Way uh, uh, represent the holy angel and the saints of God in heaven. I think it's well worth to ins uh, insist on the Milky Way. Now you have a much broader view of that uh, Milky Way. I just noticed that Mars is opposite of the right where we find good. Mars is bad. As much as we have found uh, in Sagittarius, the good on the left and the bad on the right, just the last minute. Remark, uh, I didn't notice that. Now, for another sign, I forgot uh, the Son, which represents God, the Father, or God Jesus, is in the scale. Another important uh, sign in the star. The scale, or Libra, are surrounded by um, Scorpio, 
Ophiuchus, Hydra, those are a bad constellation, and Virgo, not a bad one, for sure. So the sign of Libra is surrounded by menace, menacing evil. Above is serpents, the coiling constrictor snake, poised to snatch the crown, Corona. To the west is Scorpio, the stinging scorpion, poised to kill and to eat. To the south is the tail of Hydra, the sea serpent, indicating by its position the disregard and disrespect disrespect of the rulers of the world for the king of king dying upon the cross. The king of king Jesus dying upon the cross is the main significance of Libra. To the east is Mary Virgo, powerless to save her son, watching him die. The constellation associated with the scale or Libra, you have crux, means cross, four bright stars in the shape of the cross. At the very bottom right in the diagram, this tells us Libra is not just any altar or any test, it is the trial of Christ. The position very deep in the south of the sky points to the wickedness and injustice of man, that they, should, that they should crucify the Son of God, the Holy One, who did not deserve to die for any fault of his own. The constellation Corona Borealis, or crown, speaks of the wrath of the victor, that is the Messiah, passes the test. It is also in the shape of a cup, the communion cup of believers who share in the victory by partaking of Christ's blood by faith. The, the, the constellation Victima or Lupus, like a wolf, is a picture of the slain carcass of the sacrificial animal, the pierced body of Christ the communion bread of believer. So here is a screenshot from uh, uh, the constellation of Libra. This is Corona Borealis. And this is the cross or called Crux in Latin. And you have also Lupus that refers to carcass of animal, the body of Christ. So to see the sun, uh, which easily represents Jesus, which is the light of the world, and the scale, and all those uh, other constellations associated with the scale, I think this is another a uh, very um, evident sign uh, in the star for the time and seasons we are in. So remember, on the 17th of Sheshvan, which is 17 also of November of this year, we can make with 17, 1 plus 7, and we will... We will have uh, a eight, and uh, Sheshvan is also the eight ecclesiastical month. We know it's the second civil month, but uh, on a religious sphere, it's the eight month, and eight is uh, the number of new beginning, like I said in other uh, video. Eight is a number of you beginning. And if we take 17, which makes one plus seven, eight, and we associate that with the eighth religious or ecclesiastical month, we have a eight, eight for the Hebrew side. 
now are on our calendar, which is November, but November for the Roman, it was the ninth month. November refers to the number nine. And we also have a 17. So 17 is one plus seven, which we have eight plus November nine. It makes 17. Again, we have a 17. And um, if we add 1 plus 7, we have another 8. On the side of, uh, let's say, the pagan saved. So, 8-8 eight, eight on the Hebrew side, 8 on the pagan uh, saved. We have a 8-8-8 eight, eight, eight and... Jesus is referred to the number 888. If we take the symbol of Christianity, which is a fish, and we have in that fish a, a Greek acronym, which is called Ishtus, and this acronym um, refers to Jesus Christus Theos Aios Soto. Jesus Christ, God, Son, and Savior. Those are the Greek letter acronym uh, described in detail. If we take the corresponding number of those uh, not Hebrew, but Greek letter. We have 400 plus 200 plus 200. We have a 800. 70 plus 10, 80. And 8, we have, we arrive at the uh, number 888 for uh, this acronym, which means Jesus. So, um, I think uh, we can associate uh, those dates, 17 uh, of November to the 888. The Hebrew Gematria for the name Noah is 58, Shem 340, Shafet 490, adds up to 888. The Bible labels Noah as a righteous man, Shem and Japheth, two of Noah's sons, honor the honored their father when they covered his body after he got drunk, stripped off all his clothes, and fell asleep on the floor. Noah blessed them when he awoke and was sober. The prophet Ezekiel received a vision involving 888 of what is commonly referred to as the Millennial Temple. This temple had three gates, which led from the inner court of the temple to its outer court. Each of these three gates had its gems decorated with palm trees, and each uh, gate possessed eight steps. Now we're going to talk about the month of Sheshvan, which is associated with the tribe of Manasseh, which is uh, the firstborn of J Joseph in Egypt. Egypt. Uh, Manasseh has, uh, in his crest, uh, now you, you have seen uh, olive uh, branch, but there's also um, in his coat of arm um, arrows. You can see here, um, other crest, uh, coat of arm of uh, a country in the world. And what is interesting is that the coat of arm of America, USA, has lots of um, Manasseh symbol uh, in the coat of arm. So we have for Manasseh the olive branch, the arrow, the name Manasseh originated from the Hebrew language, where it is spelled as 
Mm, Nashe, its etymology is deeply rooted in the Hebrew Bible, specifically in the Old Testament. The name Manasseh is generally interpreted to mean causing to forget or one who forget. This meaning is derived from a significant biblical story where Joseph, the son of Jacob, name is, he named his firstborn Manasseh, stating, God has made me forget all my trouble in all my father's household. Joseph uh, in Egypt had two sons. The first one is Manasseh, the second one is Ephraim. The history of the name of Manasseh can be traced back to ancient times, particularly with Within Jew, Jewish and Christian tra tradition, Manasseh, the biblical figure, was not only the son of Joseph, but also the founder of one of, one of the twelve tribes of Israel. This tribe, known as the tribe of Manasseh, played a crucial role in the early history and settlement pattern of the Israelite in the Promised Land, primarily inhabiting region on both sides of Jordan River. You have another coat of arm also associated with Manasseh beside the olive branch, the arrow. You, al you also have a cross, uh, it's not the St. Andrew cross that most people think about. This cross relates to Israel or Jacob blessing on Manasseh and Ephraim. Um, so there's uh, other uh, coat of arm uh, of different country where you can relate to uh, the arrow f found in uh, Manasseh uh, coat of arm. When uh, Israel or Jacob blessed the son of Joseph when they met, he crossed his arms to have Ephraim blessed first, not blessed first, but with his right hand, and Manasseh with his left hand. And uh, Joseph told his father, you're wrong. But Jacob told uh, Joseph he was doing uh, the right thing. Because usually the firstborn is supposed to have the right hand on his head. And this time it was Ephraim who had uh, the right hand arm on his head and Manasseh the left hand so that's why there is a a cross associated with the Manasseh tribe and uh, like I said it's not the Saint Andrew cross it's referring to the way Israel or Jacob bless the son uh, of uh, Joseph when they met um, for me, what it was a discovery. So now, in the coat of arm of the United States, we have the eagle representing uh, supremacy of God. Um, the eagle has on his right uh Pow, I don't I don't know if it's Pow, but the olive branch, thirteen uh, leaves on this olive branch, and on his left um, Pow, he has a uh, thirteen arrow, and there's thirteen stripes, there's thirteen feather, and uh, thirteen. Um, Lots of 13 that I will describe. Uh, you also have the David star over the head of the uh, of the eagle. So in the coat of arms of the United States, there is a lot of 13. You can read them. And uh, they say Manasseh is the 13th. 13, 13, uh, tribes of uh, Israel. 
And uh, in fact, it's not really a 13 tribe, but uh, Israel is a semi uh, tribe of Joseph, as Ephraim is a semi tribe of uh, Joseph. So there are subdivision of the tribe of Joseph. Uh, which divides in uh, Manasseh and uh, Ephraim tribes. So you can see uh, 13 uh, star above the eagle, 13 bar on the shield, 13 leaves on the olive branch, 13 berries on fruit, 13 arrow. So the, the United States coat of arm is directly related to the tribe of uh, Manasseh. Capitalism represents one aspect of the essence of the United States, the Hebrew name Mashir and ah, mash, mach, Machiri or Mashiri, belonging to Mashir, became the word, the word America in Hebrew. The name Mashir connotes selling or price and encapsulates the principle of capitalism. Mashir was the first bomber. Mashir was the firstborn son of Manasseh. Wow. Manasseh and Mashir related in America. Yank and, uh, and Jacob, we, we hear about Yank, Yankee. Yank is a nickname for American. Yank means Jack, which is short for Jacob. Manasseh was attached more to Jacob, whereas Ephraim was closer to Joseph. So that's why I am intrigued by the fact that we have Trump recently elected. We have in the text of King James the expression, the last Trump. We have Manasseh tribe and Sheshvan related, and Manasseh is linked directly to United States. I was wondering why we are told there are 12 tribes of Israel when there are in fact 13 tribes. Uh, maybe it's the contrary. We are told 13 as in reality there are 12. You have listed Manasseh as well as Joseph. Manasseh and Ephraim are both of the tribe of Joseph. Just listing Joseph gives, gives you 12 tribes. That's how the tribe of Israel were pos positioning themselves in the desert, desert when uh, they were resting and uh, this chart is a little bit confusing because if we count uh, the tribes of Israel plus Levi, we have a 13. But anyway, what's interesting is the fact that the way they were placing those tribes in uh, the desert is like a cross. So remember that there are 12 tribes Finally, of Israel, you have their name here. And remember that uh, Manasseh and Ephraim are linked to the Joseph tribe. And uh, Manasseh is uh, the firstborn, Ephraim the secondborn. Manasseh and Ephraim are semi-tribes uh, of uh, Joseph, two Demi, two semi tribe, semi tribes. So those are uh, recent uh, news. Um, you can read them. Those are early observation. As much as I watch in Stellarium, as as much as I watch on YouTube, the recent news, and on the early. Observation, it's not uh, very, very, very good. We can see uh, the world is, in, not, is not in a good health. And uh, for me, uh, 
seen all those uh, explosive signs in the star and seeing all those explosive signs on the earth makes me wonder. And I also seeing the 17 of Sheshvan, 17 of November linked to Noah's flood makes me seriously wonder about a very, very important date that could be, could be a rapture date. We are not uh, absolutely sure of any date, but one thing we are sure is we are very close and in the season of uh, our deliverance. For sure, Jesus told us we cannot set a date, but uh, he said to watch, and not only watch in the scripture, not only watch on uh, what's going on on earth, but also watch in the star for signs for season. So I hope I was not too long. I will. I hope I've uh, done my homework, and uh, I hope. Uh, I always hope this will be uh, the last video uh, I will make. And um, we really hope for a deliverance. We are not worthy of the blood of the Lamb. We are saved by grace, but we are persevering in the faith. We are in a process of sanctification. And it's hard to imagine to be a royal uh, priesthood, to to live in the kingdom of heaven, to have privilege we don't have on earth, and not to live in our fleshly and, uh, body and on our muddy earth. So um, I guess uh, I guess we we have to. Uh, persevere in our hope, persevere in the Word of God, persevere in the fact that there is a deliverance and um, glory to the Father, Yahweh, glory to the Son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Mashiach, glory to the Holy Spirit, Glory to God the Father, God, glory to God the Son, glory to God the Holy Spirit, and uh, thank you for listening to me. Amen.